Okay, everybody. Assalamualaikum. I'm Miss Faisal Khalid, as you all know, and today we are going to review the signal transduction that we have already studied so far, and we are going to, inshallah, Taala, wrap up the topic. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, in the uh, after the last lesson, okay, I got call from uh, the GR, okay, and she told me that uh, a lot of uh, students are not able to hear me properly. So you see, when you join Zoom, okay, there is um, there is a button by the name of Join with Audio, something like Cell Audio, okay. It's uh, usually if you're joining in through your uh, uh, that thing if you're joining through your cell phone okay so it's usually at the bottom left hand side okay so you have to press that button in order to hear me okay if any of one of your friends is not able to hear me and they are complaining about it please help them okay uh, thank you so let's start okay all right next slide okay so uh first of all you know uh, we have been talking about signal transduction and all okay and uh, in my last video i observed some of the students were using the word transduction okay so i really thought that it's important to uh, let you all know that there's a difference between signal transduction and just transduction okay so what is signal transduction first of all let's talk about it signal transduction is all about amplification okay for example, I have uh, an application in my phone, okay, which my children installed, and it was about playing the piano, okay. So what happened was, as soon as my children, okay, they actually touched the screen, okay, so different notes were uh, produced, different note sound were produced. Later on, they attach uh, their cell phone, okay, with the uh, speaker, okay, and then when they touch the screen okay on those particular notes so a very loud sound was produced now so you see amplification amplification is there okay first of all small sound was produced and afterwards a huge sound was produced okay so signal transduction is all about that one molecule you see over here okay that one molecule is here okay and it's creating a series of reaction okay and you see a lot of protein kinase were activated by just a single molecule you see uh, so this is amplification this is signal transduction so what is transduction you see over here like single molecule is getting attached and it's producing all the uh, way changes in the nucleus okay it's instructing nucleus what kind of proteins should be made and as a result specific proteins are made okay uh, so what is transduction transduction is about uh, you know when the viral dna okay it adds up into the bacterial plasmid okay so that is about, all about it so uh, that's how you know um, a lot of wait somebody is okay so you see uh, this is the signal, uh, this is transduction, okay? And previously, which we saw in my previous slide, okay? So that was signal transduction, okay? What was signal transduction all about? Signal transduction was about amplification of a signal, okay? However, transduction is about the mining of the DNA, the bacterial DNA with the viral DNA in order to produce a lot of the uh, viral DNA. And uh, as a result, the viral DNA gets hold of the cell okay all right wait next okay now we are going to talk about cell communication that how exactly cell talk to each other not talk but how exactly they communicate to each other okay is it only by uh, the receptors getting the signals or there's some other way let's see okay so there's one two three four four ways okay i repeat there's four ways of communicating chemical messages okay one the first one is autocrine autocrine okay as the name indicates that automatically the cell is communicating okay so a cell targets itself okay uh, then is signaling uh, across gap junctions okay here i'm sure you all can now easily uh, I'm, I'm sure after watching this uh, uh, this image you all can predict that it's all about you know uh, a neurotransmitter crossing the junction and uh, producing its impact and all okay then is paracrine 
paracrine is a cell targets a nearby cell okay by locally acting okay by locally releasing the chemicals okay uh, okay then is uh, endocrine okay endocrine is what endocrine you all know i'm sure you all have studied that in your intermediate that um, you see it's a whole lot of system by which the chemical messages the hormones are transferred from one organ to another by entering into the bloodstream okay so these are the four types autocrine signaling through gap junctions paracrine and endocrine all right now we are going to talk about modes of signaling okay so the first one is uh, cams okay cams what is that cell addition molecule you see over here cell addition protein cadherin okay so i am sure after looking at this image you can easily predict that what is this what is this you see the, the, it's joining two cells okay and this uh, plays a very important role when an embryo is about to uh, develop okay so at that moment okay these cadherin uh, sorry these ca cams proteins okay they play a very integral role so there there is a huge class okay but since we are not doing the entire chapter of these proteins okay this is just introductory unit where you are superficially you know coming to know what is that all about so you just need to remember you, there there's five classes of pro these proteins okay but at this level uh, you should remember only two examples okay just for reference that is integrins and cadherins and then inshallah later on you will develop more knowledge on it on top of it okay how do they work they work by the process of cell addition okay cell addition what is that the cell gets adhered okay cams are located on the cell surfaces and are involved in binding with other cells or with extracellular matrix in the process right okay then as uh, we have just discussed endocrine paracrine and autocrine pathway i uh, made this slide so that you can know some examples about it okay uh, endocrine i i know you all can tell me more names than just one which i have mentioned here that is estrogen i am sure you all can name like at least 10 more hormones just like that like very easily right so uh, but here for example, I am giving you name of estrogen, okay, it's produced by ovary and then it's transported to the brain where it regulates the female reproductive system, okay, all of the female characteristic, uh, uh, characteristics are actually produced by this hormone, okay, then it's paracrine, right, paracrine is when the uh, nearby cell is affected by it, okay, by the release of the molecule, so over here, I am uh, taking the example of neurotransmitters which are uh, working by crossing the synapse, right? Then I have autocrine signaling, okay? Autocrine signaling cell produces a signal molecule which responds to itself, okay? So the example is the, uh, <coughs> sorry, T lymphocytes, okay? So they can uh, do proliferation in their own. You see over here how the cell is producing an autocrine and how exactly it's entering uh, and affecting itself okay uh, okay all right then is chemical messenger types okay in chemical messenger types uh, in my last i think so many lectures i am talking about it continuously that we have hydrophilic and we have hydrophobic molecules right so hydrophobic molecules need to uh, they don't need any you know assistance they would just enter into the cell by crossing across the cell membrane just like that however when there are water soluble signaling molecules or you can say hydrophilic or you can say uh, when there is polar molecules okay at that moment okay we need receptors for amplification of the message okay all right cell receptors which we have studied so far since i've already told you it's a review kind of a lecture so uh, G proteins are there, okay, and uh, G proteins bind and they produce a response. Ion channels are there, right? Uh, you all must remember in my last lecture, I talked about uh, sodium potassium channels. I talked about calcium uh, voltage gated channels. I talked about sodium 
voltage gated channels then i talked about the leak channels right so all of them uh, play a crucial role in maintaining uh, the resting membrane potential and also in generating an excitement uh, in the neuro uh, to produce a neurotransmission okay then we have tyrosine kinase linked receptor okay so what are they um, they are the enzymes okay they are the enzyme linked receptors okay then we have receptors with intrinsic catalytic activity so these are the receptors uh, intrinsic catalytic activity means within the cell right so they are binding and they are producing its effect okay so uh, all right I have somebody who wants to enter the okay now we have a uh, ligand binding uh, to the surface receptor right uh, the ligand binds okay and then the uh, effect is produced okay and the termination is also there okay you see when uh, somebody produces and binds uh, somebody produces a second messenger okay or somebody is uh, not somebody some molecule actually binds to the uh, dna okay and starts to produce proteins okay it means their effect would la would last so long okay all right wait um, wait okay so second messengers what are they how do they work just a recap quick recap okay gdb was attached to the G, uh, to the trimeric, okay, that is alpha, beta, gamma. Uh, the GDB got converted into, sorry, the D, GDB got converted into GTP. The uh, complex got activated. As a result, phospholipase C was activated and then IP3 was produced, okay, which is a second messenger, right? And as a result, calcium, was entered into the cell, okay, and therefore overall cell effect was produced, okay. Then we have another example of uh, second messenger system, okay, that how exactly uh, different hormones which are uh, uh, which are responsible to function in the uh, female reproductive organ, okay. So these are luteinizing hormone. Okay, what is luteinizing hormone? It, it's the hormone which actually uh, produces ovulation, okay? The ovule is released by the uh, follicle, by the mature follicle, okay? So how exactly this is? And then we have um, follicle stimulating hormone that is FSH. FSH is the hormone which uh, actually matures up the uh, primary or immature follicles within the ovary, right? okay so the two cell uh to the two cell two gonadotrophin system for estradiol synthesis in the ovary and follicle lh and fsh are shown to stimulate adenylate cyclase via g protein and then uh you know the entire process works as i've told you before uh one th this is an example okay of g protein couple receptor so you just need to remember that which hormone is synthesized by it or it produces effect by it just that that much okay not more like i won't ask you to uh you know i i would ask you okay that how exactly g proteins work but i won't go into the depth of it okay mm -hmm. okay so um if you remember in my last video okay i also talked about the steroid hormones okay that how exactly they work how they work? They enter into the cell membrane just by crossing the cell membrane like that, right? And when they cross the cell membrane, so uh, we wanted to know, and I want you all to remember the names of the hormones, okay? Which are steroid in nature, okay? So these are androgens, glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids. Then we have uh, vitamin D3, retinoic acid, cortisol, estrogen, testosterone, okay? So these are you see steroid receptor steroidal okay so when they are able to cross the cell membrane if they and when they are able to bind with the 
um, nucleus with the chromatin network, okay, and then specific proteins are made, okay. So that means a very long term effect would be produced. And even if these would stop being produced, okay, even then the effect would be there for such a long time, right? Uh, steroid hormones are less soluble in aqueous solution, makes sense, right? Most are transported in the blood by carrier proteins, such as the specific plasma, globulins, and albumin uh, synthesized in the liver. We all know that our blood is made up of plasma and the blood cells. So all of these actually uh, hormones are there in the plasma and that's how they are uh, travel. Uh, th that's how they travel from one place to another. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. The same, exactly same thing. Okay. Which I have discussed with you in the last lecture that steroidal hormones were there. They entered in the uh, cell by crossing the cell receptor. No, sorry, by crossing the cell membrane. Okay. And then they uh, bind it with the cell receptor. Okay. And as a result, the uh, complex was produced which crossed the nuclear membrane. Okay. And enter uh, into the nucleus in order to bind with a specific portion of the chromatin network with specific DNA uh, molecules so that a protein would be synthesized in order to produce the effect. Okay. All right, so this is how exactly it's working, right? Hormone is centering, entire transcription and translation is done, and then the protein is made, right? Okay, then comes up the uh, major class, by the way, uh, which uh, I don't know why it's not in the uh, book that you guys are following, okay? But I really want you to know about this, okay? Uh, why I'm introducing these topics to you right now? Because when you will, um, inshallah, Tala, study the topics after, like in the fourth lecture or fifth lecture, everything would be so much easier for you to understand if you know these basic terminologies. For example, right now, if I say I am giving somebody calcium channel blockers, okay, so automatically it would come in your mind that I am giving a medicine, okay that would block the calcium channels so and when i'm saying calcium channels are blocked it means a contraction would be affected right okay similarly if i'm saying i am giving somebody uh, sodium channel blockers okay so as a result what would happen as a result the excitatory effect would be blocked okay maybe uh, in my body okay let's say excitatory effect is produced a lot okay and I just want to uh, minimize the effect, okay? So I then give the blockers of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say sodium gated channels or something in order to control the amount that is being produced, okay? All right, coming up to this part, okay? What is this all about? Um, okay, so this is pronounced as icosinoid, okay? Icosinoid, okay? And what are they? How do, how do they work? Let's talk about it. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. So uh, basically, let's just say uh, there is a bee. Okay, and uh, it stung me. Okay. So as a result, what would happen? A bump would be produced on my skin. Okay, and it would hurt me a lot. An inflammation would be there, right? So how exactly inflammation happened? Okay, inflammation happened by this. This, this compound, okay, that is I, I, um, sorry, <laughs> icosinoids, okay. So, uh, what are they? Let's talk about it even more, okay. So, several types of lipids serve as signaling molecules that, in contrast to steroid hormones, act by binding to cell surface receptors. Now, the thing is this: by reading the first line, it's very clear to us that they are uh, lipophilic in nature, right? But why exactly they're not able to uh, like directly enter into the cell membrane? And why they do, do they need this cell surface receptor? For that, um, uh, we need to study a bit more till here, okay? Then I'll tell you why this is happening, okay? So 
the most important of these molecules are members of a class of lipids uh, called the eicinocytes, uh, which includes prostaglandins, pro uh, prostacyclins, thromboxins, and leukotrine. Uh, leukotrines. Okay. Now, lipids are ag lipids acting as signaling molecules. Okay. So, how exactly these are made? These are actually made by lipids when they are broken down into fatty acids. Okay, uh, I'm sure in, in the intermediate classes you all have studied that uh, a lipid molecule. Okay, it's based off on a, um, on a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. Okay, and when we talk about hydrophilic, so that's the acidic part. Okay, so this is the fatty acid. Okay, fatty acid is attached. Okay, over here. And uh, when we discuss it even more, so its name is arachidonic uh, acid, okay? So this is the acid which is produced and which actually produces inflammation and everything. It's not that it's a direct thing that a chemical is released and then uh, like ultimately uh, the without any further steps, you know, uh, something is created, okay? So it does have a lot of further steps, okay, by which a cell goes through. Uh, okay, I have only 10 minutes and I have to show you a video as well. So I am, uh, you see over here, it targets the blood platelets, aggregation and inflammation. So its major, major role is in uh, platelets aggregation when the, uh, let's say if somebody gets a cut or if something inflames. Wait, uh, I want to go on the next slide and my computer is stuck. Wait. Okay, so uh, this I Ico, okay, Ico. Uh, this word actually tells you that this is made up of twenty carbon, okay. And let's just say, let's just imagine there is a chain of carbons, okay, and it has twenty carbons in it, okay. And then there's another terminology that is polyunsaturated. Poly means many, unsaturated means a double bonds, okay. So this means this is a chain of carbons, okay, which has a lot of carbon atoms with the double bonds, okay. And then it has a short life, okay. Inflammation, you see inflammation lasts after some time, okay. It doesn't go on and on and on and on, right. And it produces effect by binding to the G protein couple receptors and increases CAMP levels like I've already discussed with you. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the entire process happens, which is already discussed with you in the previous sources. Major process, I've just told you names of these four. You have to memorize it. This is a very important class and you will study uh, about this entire class when you will study about the NSAIDs, okay? And when I say NSAID, it means uh, brufin and uh, all these medicines, okay? Aspirin, okay? Now, Effect of iconocyte, which I think it's very important for you to remember, that is induction of inflammation, uh, uh, mediation of uh, pain signals, induction of fever, like all things that you get, you know, once uh, an inflammation is there. Let's say if uh, I get an allergy by taking a medicine, so this person, this, this molecule, iconocyte is actually activated, okay? So smooth muscle contraction, smooth muscle relaxation, uh, sometimes, okay? It, it actually depends on the quantity, okay? Anyways, prote protection of stomach lining. If I'm saying this iconocyte is producing uh, production, protection of a stomach lining, okay? And if I take a medicine, okay, which stops uh, its production, it means that it will start to produce ulcers, right? Then platelet aggregation uh, in when clotting happens okay and then uh, sodium and water retention is there okay all right uses uh, i would suggest you all uh, that when i'll upload this video on the youtube okay you should pause this slide okay you should pause the video here and actually write the name these uh, medicines names okay with you because i will ask you names of the medicines that which medicine is used to treat what okay so it's self-explanatory. You can read it on your own. Um, okay, the video time. All right. This is all about aspirin. Aspirin has several effects on the body. Wait. But this this video is about aspirin. Okay, wait. Uh, wait. Oh no. 
Okay, guys. Uh, admit. Um, you share. Oh no. Wait, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, wait. Mm -hmm. I have five minutes to move. Aspirin has several effects on the body, but the primary uses are for, one, anti-inflammation, fever reduction, and pain relief. Okay. Okay, guys, uh, I can't see any thumbs up sign. Okay, no problem. I'll ask you again. Okay, so <clears throat> wait. Wait. Okay, now uh, and the next slide is about uh, nitric oxide. Okay, basically, what happens is nitric oxide is actually released locally. Okay, and it reduces inflammation. Why am I not able to wait? Okay, awesome. So the gas nitric oxide is a simple gas, okay? It's very short-lived, okay? And if you see the comparison of the pictures, okay? So you see one is pretty inflamed, okay? And then uh, somebody inhales nitric oxide, okay? So the smooth muscles actually uh, get relaxed, okay? And then uh, the, lumen di uh, the lumen is bigger as compared to the first one, right? And this is paracrine signal okay which is done okay all right so uh the, these are the overall functions okay of the nitric acid which you all should know very quickly i want to go here that these are the guys who actually the scientists okay who uh, won the nobel prize for doing this discovery okay and uh this is how the proteins are formed right uh, th this is already shared with you in your slide as well, okay? That is it, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. And I think that is it. Now I'm going to upload this uh, slide, okay? The PowerPoint presentation in your... Uh